Well, hey there, folks, and welcome back to the Pits of YouTube. Now, over the last 12 to 13 years, that's my online reselling career. I have sold this particular item tens of thousands of dollars worth. If you were to add it all up over that time, it's well above $100,000. But for the most part, these have really high profits and margins, but I don't see a lot of resellers out there talking about selling, talking about, I'm not going to leave you hanging much longer, board games. <music> probably thinking there's not that much value in board games but i'm talking i sell a lot of used board games if you go if you watch any of my videos uh any times you go into a thrift store if you go into a garage sale every house in america is filled with board games so oftentimes even in my videos you'll see that i go straight to the games and toy section because i'm hunting down these things you can often find these things for super cheap two three four five dollars sometimes they're a little bit more but for the most part, these have really high profits and margins, but I don't see a lot of resellers out there talking about selling board games. And I think I know why, which I want to talk about in this video. But for me, I'm talking to this video is about my experience of selling board games over the last 12 to 13 years and making really high profits and margins. So let's get into it. So I am assuming guessing that a lot of you have checked out board games that you've pulled, pulled out your phone, opened up your eBay app and looked up board games, very similar, very common games such as this, and found that by the time you buy them and ship them out, that they're only selling for say 15 to $20 on eBay. And when it costs nine, 10, $11 to ship these board games, as they are a little bit bulky and heavy, it doesn't leave a lot of margin. So a lot of people pass them up and that is certainly true. But so I'm talking about my experience of selling board games and eBay isn't always the best price to sell board games. Back in 2012 is when I started reselling and I actually started learning uh, by selling on Amazon. It's where I learned. I sold about 95% of everything that I sold online went through Amazon. Very little was on eBay. I didn't feel comfortable selling on eBay. Over the years, say about 2016, 2017, I transitioned, I segued over to eBay where I much prefer selling to this day. I love selling on eBay and Amazon. I don't really love, however, there is one particular program on Amazon that I still take advantage of, and it's primarily to sell and make good money on board games, specifically used board games. And I still sell some books and media through the Amazon FBA program. If you're not familiar with that, basically it's FBA stands for fulfillment by Amazon. So uh, how that differs then eBay is through this program on Amazon. And I'm not going to go into a too in-depth tutorial. I just kind of want you guys to know. And if you want to know more, I highly encourage you to uh, go to YouTube University. That's how I learned all the stuff that I know on reselling is through YouTube University. But I would highly suggest just Googling Amazon FBA, like how to, a guide to, or there is this channel um, you guys probably know uh, Rake and Profit, which I'll, I'll link his channel or mention him here now because he actually teaches a lot of, um, not necessarily board games, but he teaches a lot of Amazon FBA specific content and he makes it very uh, relatable and it's and he's a, he's a good speaker and very knowledgeable on the topic. But I use Amazon FBA. Uh, going back to, I, don't, I get a little sidetracked a little bit all over the place, but the FBA just means fulfillment by Amazon, meaning you, I get to send all these board games so I don't have to store them. Like on eBay, you store all your merchandise in your own home, in your own space. This FBA program that Amazon offers, uh, I can ship all this stuff to an Amazon warehouse. And then when it sells, they do the packing, the shipping, and the actual shipping out to the customer, and they take a percentage or a fee. And that's how it works. So I don't have to deal with the customer service. I basically collect the inventory, pack it up, ship it to the Amazon warehouse where I get a very good uh, Amazon FBA sellers also get a very good, very highly discounted rate to ship to the uh, Amazon warehouses. So if I were to sell any particular individual game, selling it on eBay, for example, much, I think almost all of these games are minimum going to be like seven. That's even low. I would say minimum $8 and then up to maybe 10, 11, 12, possibly even more, depending how far and how heavy these games are. So shipping costs on these individual games going out to an individual consumer or buyer on eBay, the shipping costs are going to be very high, which is why it's really hard to profit selling used board games on eBay when these games are only selling for $15, $20, $25 between the purchase price and then the eBay fees and the shipping costs. There's very, very uh, little margin to make. And that's where this Amazon FBA program is really solid because 
this stuff I can sell for, or I can ship into the Amazon warehouse for roughly like 65 or 75 cents per pound. So it's much cheaper. And then Amazon fees, oh, uh, the, the cut that they take is very, uh, it works out to our advantage as sellers. So it makes a lot of the $20 board games, you can still make three or four or $5, even though you're still only selling these for a very similar price to what you might sell them on eBay, which I'm gonna give a few examples, some real examples to show how I make tens of thousands of dollars on these super easy to find games that we all see everywhere under our beds in goblin layers where I keep the kids that misbehave and everywhere in between those specific two places you can find you can find games. So if you see in this fine display, one game I sell a lot of is this game Quelf. And Quelf, it sounds like a dirty word, and it happens to be sitting on top of this boxers or briefs game. And I feel like when you Quelf, you happen to do it, hopefully you Quelf when you're wearing boxers or briefs. So this particular Quelf game I found at a thrift store and I paid, I don't know if you can see it there, three bucks. And I have a lot of great questions about board games that have come up that I'll, I'll insert answers as I'm talking to without trying to talk too much, which is uh, pretty much impossible if you've ever been to this channel before. But uh, you can see up on the screen, so used on Amazon, you can see this sells for uh, just under $18, $17.93. Now after the FBA fees, which you can see are $9.13, that leaves me the gross proceeds of $8.80. Now obviously I have to minus this $3 plus tax, so we're going to call this uh, between a five and six dollar a profit overall. So I'm 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 about doubling my money on this particular game by selling it on Amazon using the FBA program. Now, if you go over to eBay, you can see that this recently sold for eighteen dollars. Somebody took a best offer uh, as very similar to that the eighteen dollar price point that we sold it on Amazon. So why it's really hard to make money is because that eighteen dollars now you're paying eBay fees, which is uh, basically like thirteen percent of that. So we're just going to call it roughly. We'll call it. To 2.50, uh, not exact science, not exact math here, but we'll call it $2.50 in eBay fees. Plus we have this $3 purchase price, so that's 5.50. Plus the shipping, uh, the shipping cost on a game like this, which is actually very heavy, it's a little bit bulky. I'm guessing this game is probably going to be at least nine dollars to ship maybe nine to ten dollars so we add that to that 550 and we're looking at roughly a 1350 to 14 dollars 50 fees all in and if we're only selling it for 18 that's really only leaving us between like a two and three dollar profit by selling this game so you can see that that's one one difference about selling on amazon where i'm making roughly five to six dollars versus three to four dollars and you can basically do that with any of these games this boxes or briefs for example you can see i paid three dollars at a thrift store and i have a couple of them here a couple of quilts a couple of boxes of briefs and um if we look at what it sells for on amazon you can see here that it sells for about 27 dollars and 50 cents uh collectible which is actually really that's a pretty good price point for this three dollar game you can see after fees with fba we're talking about 17 dollars and 60 cents so for that three dollar purchase price you see after that 17.63 minus that three dollars we're making between 14 and 15 dollars on the purchase of that game the purchase and sale of that game versus if we go over to ebay for example you can see even brand new this game is only selling for seven plus 11 brand new that's 18 or 14 on this other listing so you're set you're, you're seeing that it's selling for about half the price that it's selling on amazon and that's brand new you sold this game for 18 dollars and again you know quick math just like we did for 12 you're paying three dollars you're paying ebay fees of say roughly two dollars fifty cents and then that's 550 plus this game probably like let's say nine dollars to ship it so we're talking another same thing very, very similar math to quilf that 14 dollars and 50 cents ish uh range is what the fees and shipping costs and everything are for this and if we're only selling it for in, in the best case scenario used one for 18 dollars you can see we're only making three to four dollars versus the amazon where we're making about 14 dollars profit and i do want to mention there is a fee it's a 40 dollar fee to be part of the program and that might sound steep however just like ebay the the the, the costs associated the fees associated with selling on amazon fba 
one of the one of the things because there's actually you can sell on Amazon. You don't have to use the FBA program. You can still sell. It's called um, Merchant Fulfilled. So you can sell on Amazon just like you sell it on eBay, meaning you can just use Amazon's platform to sell it. You don't have to use their customer service and their FBA program. You can just sell this uh, and fulfill it yourself, meaning you sell this game. When somebody buys it, you pack it up, ship it, ship it out. And same thing, but uh, again, the fees on something like this profiting that way on uh, the merchant fulfilled side of things would be very similar experience to trying to sell a board game on eBay. The profits and margins are going to be very low, but you certainly can. So uh, one of the fees, there's a flat fee of one dollar on Amazon and somebody can correct me. Obviously, uh, please do if I'm wrong about this. But basically, there's of the many fees that happen that eBay and Amazon and the sites charge us, one of the fees is a dollar flat charge for selling any particular item on Amazon. One of the fees is a straight dollar cost. And the $40 FBA program fee actually pays for itself if you sell 40 items as that $1 fee is removed. So as soon as you sell 41 items, for example, it is now paid for itself and more. So obviously, not everybody has access to sell 40 games in a given month. It is a $40 monthly fee. But keep in mind, if you want to give it a shot, you can cancel any time. It's not like an annual subscription or anything. The, and most likely than not, if you've never searched for board games, uh, if you do go out there, especially if you have multiple thrift stores to go out to or friends, certainly Facebook Marketplace is a fantastic place to find board games. Everybody's getting rid of board games all the time. So it wouldn't be that hard to find 40 board games in a given month. Something that is important to know, just like on eBay, when we figure out what's something selling for, how do you know if something is worth selling on Amazon? You can't just obviously pick up, not all board games have value on Amazon. So how do you know? That's something that uh, somebody else will certainly go through on a more in-depth tutorial of selling on Amazon. That's not what this is intended to be. I'm actually not a very knowledgeable person selling on Amazon as I strictly sell pretty much board games, some uh, Blu-rays, DVDs, books, and some random toys. However, one thing that I can mention is something like on this taboo game here. You can see up in the corner... It says uh, 94,478 rank in toys. So that means that this is roughly the 94,000th most popular toy that is selling on Amazon. And that might sound really high, but you have to take into consideration that, uh, that there are over a million, two million, three million toys being sold on Amazon. So this is actually in the top 1% of everything that is currently selling on Amazon. So I'm interrupting the video here because I actually found this US Amazon sales rank chart. You can find this as a free resource. A lot of different resellers have blogs or websites who are Amazon specific resellers. And this particular one, they update it every month. Uh, I'll put it on the screen, which, which site I happen to find this one on. But this is a good chart just to kind of familiar yourself with. You don't have to memorize it as you can pull it up on the internet or just say, this monthly as a picture on your phone or whatever. But this is just to give reference for what I'm talking about here. As you can see, everything in the left hand, these are general categories. So uh, on Amazon, and if you were to pull up your selling app, scan a barcode in that sales rank. And in this particular case, we're talking about board games, which are under the toys and games category. So that sales rank that I'm referring to that you see here is about 94,000. So if we go down to the toys and games, you can see in the right, in the, uh, all the way to the right where it says total at the top, the total column, it says that there are currently 9 million, over 9 million individual listings for in the toys and games category on Amazon. That's a lot of toys and games. Again, look this stuff up on YouTube University. It's the best It's the best place to learn, uh, especially about this sales rank. You can see this other taboo game here, 44,000. So this sells uh, significantly at a better rate than that other taboo game. Right? And then finally, that other taboo game is in the 209,000. So this is a little bit slower. And uh, there are uh, there are apps and information out there to show you like how often does a game that has a 44,000 rank or a 209 or a 90,000 rank, how often are those selling? And there are apps that are designed to show you roughly how many sales per day, per week, per month on any particular item with any particular um, sales rank. And that all said, I still do sell. And that all said, I still do sell some board games on eBay. It's certainly appropriate when I'm restricted from a product on Amazon like I am here on this 
Pictionary here. This is a brand new and this is a vintage version, 2000, well, not true vintage, I guess, just 2013 version. I paid $5. You might notice if you watched uh, my four part video where I was out in Montana, uh, I picked this game up on Montana. So I think I, this was $5 and half off. So I think I paid $2.50 for this. And at the time, I wasn't restricted on Amazon. However, right now, and you can see that it's selling for almost $47 on Amazon, which is obviously fantastic. So the fact that I'm restricted and can't sell it, then I would turn to eBay first to see if it's profitable. And it does okay at a $2.50. You can see that it sells for roughly 20, between 24, just about $25. So I'll still make five to $10 profit. Now I did make a video a few months back where I talk about selling on eBay versus Amazon and how I choose what to sell on which platform. And I'm going to highlight that video in the comment section or down you know, down below where you kind of type in some jargon and nobody probably reads. And finally, before I go, one of the most popular questions that I get about board games is, do I count the pieces in the thrift store at garage sales to make sure that the games are complete? And that's a fantastic question. And there's a lot of uh, variables in answering that, of course, because nothing is simple these days. That really depends on the value of the game. Uh, it could be something as simple as what mood I'm in. I don't really even have like a set of rules per se, but uh, depending on if, if it's like a $50 game, say, and they're selling it for a dollar, I'm not going to count the pieces because I'll, I'd rather risk the dollar. Uh, if, they were, if they were asking like $15, that, in that case, I would probably uh, take the time and, and count it whether I'm at a, a garage sale or a thrift store. I would just count all the pieces. And there's actually quick ways to do it. I don't know if any of these games are open, but the quickest way is obviously there's instructions uh, inside. But on the back of the game, you can also, it gives you kind of a rundown of all the things that should be inside the box. And this, you know, I paid $2 for. You can see I didn't bother counting the pieces. And that's for a couple, and that's for a couple of reasons because uh, you can, as you can see, you know, I have two of these. So when I'm spending two or three dollars for these and they sell for this particular game sells for, I think it was 27 bucks on Amazon. So uh, the two dollars isn't a bigger deal if this was like, if it's just completely missing so many parts. But also I figure between the two games that I paid very cheaply for, I'm guessing at mo or at, at, at least I should say, between the two games, I'll have all the pieces to at least make one complete game. So my $5 that I put into this are still very profitable, uh, even if I don't have two complete games and I have one complete game. Some people would buy, you know, this Boxers and Briefs, say it's really popular. You can just buy uh, anytime you see them out and not even worry about if the, the pieces are complete because you can just store them, basically. If you have the room to store them, and uh, you can just buy them and complete games as you go, as you find more games out in the wilds. And that's something that certainly some people do. And uh, one thing that I do know some people do uh, pretty pretty decently with is selling game pieces. Like in that scenario, if I find a $50 board game and I get home and I see that, oh, there's like one little uh, die missing or one little character piece. I go on eBay and search for that piece and more likely than not, you can find it because there are resellers out there who buy board games just strictly to resell the pieces. I can't imagine that it's very fun, but uh, you know, it's a way to make money. It's another avenue to make make money. So uh, if, if that's your fancy, then you can certainly, that option is available. Covered a lot and I know I was certainly a little bit all over the place, but I hope I have enough information in this video to kind of get you at least thinking about selling used board games and new board games, of course, but definitely used board games on Amazon's FBA program, strictly just because all, there are there are pros and cons to doing it, but the pros for me have far outweighed the cons. And I have, like I said, made literally tens, if not $100,000 plus over the, the 12 years of just selling these two and $3 board games, which most of them you're not making 15, 25, $30 profits. A lot of this stuff is doubling your money, making $5, $10, $15. But because there's there's just a saturated world of board games and there's so much opportunity in them that I definitely wanted to, to get you guys thinking about it. If you haven't, it, let me know about your experience on selling board games. Have you tried it? Do you like it? You don't want to do it because you don't want to deal with Amazon and I don't blame you. Do you sell board games on eBay? If that's the case, how do you do it? Um, in terms of like, do you find it profitable or do you just avoid board games because they're clunky and big and heavy? 
I want to hear all your thoughts about board games. So that's that, and uh, thanks for watching. We will meet again, and I'll see you guys out in the wild.